Hi there, now we're going to do lesson 110. I am as God created me. We will repeat today's idea from time to time. For this one thought would be enough to save you and the world if you believed that it is true. I am as God created me. If you believe that that was true of you and everybody else, you would never judge. You would stop judgment right away because if you knew that God is love and you are as God created you, you are love, so is everybody else, you wouldn't judge. And this, this, would be, this one thought would be enough to save the world. Its truth would mean that you have made no changes in yourself that have reality, nor changed the universe so that what God created was replaced by fear and evil, misery and death. If you remain as God created you, fear has no meaning. Evil is not real and misery and death do not exist. You would not be concerned because you would know your pure consciousness in the mind of God. That's how you were created. That's how you will remain forever. So fear absolutely goes away. Again, that's what I had to do with my son, Spencer. I needed to focus that he was pure energy. And he was just energy that I had. Uh, I, I wanted to experience and projecting this son out there so that I can experience what it's like to be a mother thinking wrongly with the ego or a mother thinking rightly with God. So I was able to choose to think rightly with God. Why? Because I am as God created me. I'm still in the mind of God. I'm pure consciousness resting in God. So was Spencer. So was my son. So I wanted both of us to have that experience where there is no misery. There's no death. I could not see him as dying and be afraid of him dying when there is no death. There would just be a, a change in in how he's experiencing uh, life. So if God wants to be a boy that dies of an overdose at 19 and then wants to be born as a girl in, you know, Zimbabwe, then that's what the path was for that being. My work was to be the presence of a, of one who knew the truth that we are all made eternally by the same one f power that created us. Paragraph two, today's idea is therefore all you need to let complete correction heal your mind and give you perfect vision that will heal all the mistakes that any mind has made at any time or place. It is enough to heal the past and make the future free. It is enough to let the present be accepted as it is. It is enough to let time be the means for all the world to learn escape from time and every change that time appears to bring in passing by. I am as God created me. God created me as an idea in its mind. I am pure energy. I am eternal. I am pure consciousness. I am love. I am one. What is there to fear? In that eternalness, what is there to be afraid of? I know. We have those fear thoughts that come in. We forgive ourselves. We release them. And then we come back and do the work. We come back and remind ourselves of the truth. It takes time to undo what took time to create. So be patient with yourself. It took me a good 10 plus years to get to the place that I really trusted this truth. And over the last five years of my 16 year journey, I've been practicing making it, making it my reality. So it does take time. Be patient. Be loving with yourself. This is a journey of self-love. Paragraph three. If you remain as God created you, appearances cannot replace the truth. Health cannot turn to sickness, nor can death be substituted for life or fear for love. If you remain as God created you, appearances of a son overdosing cannot replace the truth. It's an energy being expressed as a son overdosing. The truth is his energy. The truth is his consciousness. The truth is he's safe in the mind of God. I, there was no need for me to be fearful. Health cannot turn to sickness. People who walk around having these experiences of, of um, cancer or illness or hurt knees or, or whatever problem that might be, it's, it's an opportunity for them to learn to love themselves and learn the beliefs that they have that are blocks to them receiving the truth of how God created them. So we all have to look at the beliefs that we have that block us from knowing the truth that is true always. So everything that we experience is being experienced to show you what we're believing that is that is a veil to the truth, to reality. It is the illusion that we have believed is real. And that's the illusion that we need to come to peace with and say, instead of thinking that, I prefer to think 
the truth of how God created me. So every person has their own path and what it is that they need to say no to, that illusion is theirs by choice. Everybody is living out the illusion that they wanted to have so that they could choose truth over illusion, so that they could choose to let go of ego and find God, so that they could choose to let go of that, that, that particular expression of darkness and find the light. Everybody's doing what they want to be doing because we're powerful. God gave us God's mind to use and, and project whatever it is that we wanted to experience. So I was not going to substitute death um, when I know life is what was eternal for Spencer. And I was certainly not going to allow fear to disrupt my ability to love him because when I was loving my son, I was loving myself. And when I was loving myself, I couldn't have fear in my mind. Why? Because I am as God created me. Sentence number two in paragraph three. All this has not occurred if you remain as God created you. None of those uh, angers and sadness and death, none of the illnesses, none of that can occur if you are as God created you. You need no thought but just this one to let redemption come to light the world and free it from the past. We've created these beliefs in the past. They've been handed down by generations after generation after generation. We are the generation that is saying no to this illusion so that the future generations are not raised with fears that they got to go to somebody outside of themselves for healing so that they know the truth that the healing happens inside so that they don't fear the outer world so that their safety is not in what their job or their money or, or a lover. We're teaching future generations that the truth is as, as God created it. That's conscious parenting. That's going to help those minds be filled with the truth, and then we'll have 30% of the population. Then we'll have 40% of the population. And each generation, we continue to evolve to, to accepting the truth that has been true always. We're all still as God created us. Isn't that beautiful? Paragraph four. In this one thought is all the past undone, the present saved to quietly extend into a timeless future. We are sending this forward, generation, generation after generation going forward. But we got to do the work and become the conscious parents. If you are as God created you, then there has been no separation of your mind from his, from his. No split between your mind and other minds and only unity within your own. So once you realize, oh, if I'm still as God created me, I'm united with all minds. Let me begin to send blessings to those minds. Let me begin to release those minds, those beings from being responsible for me. They will feel the lightness. They will know the resonance of, of my releasing them from being responsible for my joy. Why? Because I'm not going to be telling them, you didn't do this to make me happy. You didn't do that. You should have done this and that would have been better for me. I release them. They feel safe and peaceful around me because I don't have an agenda to let them know what it is that they need to do to make me happy. I'm happy for no reason. Well, yes, for a reason because that's how God created me. Paragraph five, the healing power of today's idea is limitless. It is the birthplace of all miracles, the great restorer of the truth to the awareness of the world. When we all know that we are as God created us, oh my goodness, we will stop pretending that we created ourselves. Practice today's idea with gratitude. This is the truth that comes to set you free. This is the truth that God has promised you. This is the word in which all sorrow ends. We are ideas in the mind of God. We are ideas, pure consciousness. There is nothing really solid about us in the mind of God. The solidity is that we have been believing beliefs that, that we're separate and that has made us feel solid. We will feel lighter when we stop believing that the body is real. And we start believing that our body is an expression of the real essence of God. So we want to remove the block so that our light can shine through our body. So that we can become translucent. Enlightened is that we lighten the world with our, our easy way, our cool presence. We feel light. We walk into a room and, and, and there is a lightness about us. This is the word in which all sorrow ends. I am as God created me. For, for, for your five-minute practice periods, begin with a quotation from the text. 
I am as God created me. His son can suffer nothing. I am his son. I am as God created me. His, his daughter can suffer nothing. I am his daughter. Then with this statement firmly in your mind, try to discover in your mind the self, capital S self, who is the Holy Son of God himself. I am the son, the daughter that God created. Come to know that one in you. It's eternal. It's not bound by this body. It has a massive merkaba, a field that extends 20 some odd feet around us. Isn't that amazing to know that you're so expanded? We're waking up to let more of that goodness inside of us because we've, we've blocked ourselves with the idea that, that this body is all that we are and we've left so much of our good outside of us. By recognizing how God created us, we're receiving it into ourselves. Paragraph 8. Seek Him with you who is Christ in you. Seek Him within you, I'm sorry. Seek Him within you. Who is Christ in you? We are that Christ consciousness. Just as Christ recognized his oneness with God and is teaching us this 2,000 years later, he taught it once and now he continues to teach it to us so that we can find the Christ inside of us. Why? Because we're all that Christ consciousness waiting to be born again, waiting to be resurrected from this body that appears to be weighing us down. The Son of God and brother to the world. Seek him within you, who is Christ in you, the Son of God and brother to the world, the Savior who has been forever saved with power to save whomever touches him. However lightly, asking for the word that tells him he is brother unto him. The minute you recognize that we're all one, that we're all brothers and sisters, in that place of unity, we begin to release the world because we know that we're all created exactly how God created us safe in its mind. We rest inside of that knowingness. Now we won't be searching to find our good outside of us. We won't be battling with each other for who gets more, who gets less. We will recognize that in our oneness, we all are going to move in different ways, but in the same satisfaction of knowing that our fulfillment is already granted to us by God, not by stuff outside of us. Not by jobs, not by monies, by houses, by things, by lovers, by, by spouses, by children. It will not come for, uh, from the outside. It will be from the inside out, from within, because that's where the Christ resides. Paragraph 9. You are as God created you. Today, honor your capitalist self. Let graven images you made to be the Son of God instead of what He is be worshipped. Not today. Stop believing you're less than. Stop believing there's something wrong with you. Stop believing and worshiping the idea that you're a victim of anything. Stop believing and worshiping the idea that you're separate, that you're better than, that you're lesser than, that you're not good enough, not smart enough, not tall enough, not capable enough, not rich enough, not healthy enough. Let those, those ideas go. Don't worship what is not true. Deep in your mind, the Holy Christ in you is waiting your acknowledgement as you. The Christ in me is all that I want to feel. That's why I trust these words, because they were written by God as Jesus. For me to remember that I am the self that God created, that capitalist self is Christ consciousness. When I acknowledge that I and the Father are one, that union takes place. That's all that I'm interested in. I want it to come into union, which is why I'm in communion with the truth. Paragraph 9, sentence 5. And you are lost and you are lost and do not know yourself while he is an acknowledged and unknown. Yes, we're lost and wandering through the desert because we don't know the truth of who we are. Paragraph 10, seek him today and find him. Seek Christ, seek Holy Spirit, seek God and find him. He will be your savior from all idols that you have made. For when you find him, you will understand how worthless are your idols, your ideas about yourself and how false the images which you believed were you. Today, we make a great advance to truth by letting idols go and opening our hands and hearts and minds to God today. I used to have an idea that I was just, you know, this one person, uh, insignificant, 
uh, not that smart because I didn't have a big fancy degree and I was divorced and there was something wrong with me because I've been divorced. All these ideas, they were not true about me. They were experiences that I was having, but I didn't have to believe them and run my life like they were true. I was just somebody having that experience so that I could bring love to the situation or not. That's all. My divorce was an opportunity for me to learn love. My divorce before that was an opportunity for me to learn to be the presence of love, to be as God created me. My son, an opportunity for me to do that. My jobs, my coaching, my current boyfriend, all opportunities for me to be as God created me. That's all that they are. They don't define me. They're just opportunities for me to be the presence of love. How cool is that to walk around with that much freedom? Paragraph 11. We will remember him throughout the day with thankful hearts and loving thoughts for all who meet with us today. For it is thus that we remember him. As we are having loving thoughts of others, that's how we remember Christ in us. And we will say that we may be reminded of his son, his daughter, our holy self, the Christ in each of us. I am as God created me. That's how we remember our truth, by saying it, I am as God created me. Let us declare this truth as often as we can. This is the word of God that sets you free. This is the key that opens up the gate of heaven and that lets you enter in the peace of God and his eternity. Do you want to enter into the peace of God and experience that eternalness that allows you to feel totally, completely expanded and free to be as God created you? Then all you need to do is affirm the truth and trust that it is true and live by it. And then acknowledge that so is everybody else. Everybody's as God created you, created them. They are not who you judge them to be. My ex-husband, sweet man, Ken, he was not a lousy husband as I judged them. He wasn't an idiot as I judged them. He wasn't a moron as I judged them. He was as God created him. He wasn't ignorant. He wasn't selfish. He wasn't... Um, stupid. You know, he wasn't all those things. He was as God created him, a holy being of love and light with a veil over his eyes. Innocent. Innocent. Creating suffering for himself. Why would I want to add more suffering to him when I know that giving and receiving are one and I was going to be receiving the suffering of judging him always felt yucky in me. I don't want to poison this vessel, this altar to God with beliefs about others that are other than how God created them. I love the truth. The truth has set me free. It continues to set me free. You know what? It has set me free. My ego thoughts put me in bondage. I'm clear about that. Thanks a bunch, and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.